Welcome to this week's episode of the Takedown Cafe. For those of you that don't know, my name is Alex Green. I'm the executive chef here at the Takedown Cafe. And I'm going to be showing you today how to let things marinate. So you might be thinking, all right, I clicked on this because it's a wrestling video. Why are you talking about marinating? Well, very easy question. This video is about stalemates. And I wanted to come up with a little catchy way to make you remember stalemates. So, we all know this is a symbol for stalemates right here. It's just two, your hands, boom, just like that. And a lot of other refs, a lot of coaches, a lot of people involved with the sport, anytime they see two wrestlers locked up, they will use the term marinate. They're marinating. Let it marinate a minute. And then we know in wrestling, a lot of our calls, we want to be patient. Now, in other sports, that's not true. So, if you do officiate in another sport, or if you're new to wrestling and say you're coming from football, basketball, baseball, and another sport besides wrestling, a lot of the officials' calls are instantaneous. We know if a basketball player commits a walk, they call it right on the spot. Whenever a baseball umpire calls a ball or strike or an out, they usually call it right away. In wrestling, though, there's a lot of scenarios and situations where we need to be patient on our calls. Let things marinate, let it melt, let it cook, whatever phrase you want to use, we need to be patient. And stalemates is one of those that a lot of people across the United States, they don't call it consistently. You go from one state to another, or even like if your state has regions or sections or districts or conferences or whatever, different officials, associations teach their officials to do it a certain way. So I'm gonna to try to give some guidance on that I'm going to tell you what the rule book says and as always give you my commentary. So you don't have to turn on your grill, fire up the oven, anything of that nature. Just sit back. I'm going to serve you up a five course meal with this video. Enjoy it. As always, I give the rule section article of where you can find them in the latest edition of the NFHS rule book. Of course, this is 2020-2021 season, so I'm going to give you the there's three spots. I'm going to read them off to you. We're going to start in Rule 5, Section 23. I'm going to be using the NFHS app off my phone. It is a stalemate when contestants are interlocked in a position other than a pending situation in which neither wrestler can improve their respective positions or a competitor has their hands locked around one leg of the opponent to prevent scoring. The referee, as soon as possible, shall stop the match for, and wrestling shall be resumed as for an out-of-bounds situation. Hands locked repeatedly around one leg of an opponent to prevent scoring is considered stalling. So just a little bit of commentary on that. Knowing when to call a stalemate is something that just comes with experience. Whether you wrestled in school, you've coached before, whatever the case is. Knowing when a pinning situation is about to happen and knowing when contestants can no longer improve, that's when you call stalemate. So you really need to watch some wrestling on, whether it's YouTube, go to practice, Get some JV freshman matches under your belt before you jump right into the fire of a varsity competition. But everybody's got to start somewhere. Believe me, God knows I did. But that's just something that comes with time. And it's something that if you don't have a senior or senior officials in your area to help you, just something that you're going to have to just, I'm not going to say pick up on your own, but something that you need to develop a sixth sense for. There's a Supreme Court justice named Potter Stewart. He made an opinion in a case a long time ago, he said it best for a lot of situations like this. I can't define it, but I'll know it when I see it. So if we started going down the list and every single scenario where a stalemate could happen, if this, if this, what about this, that we, this would be a 10 hour long video. It's just one of those things, I'll know it when I see it. Our second place where we can find where stalemates are defined in the rule book comes in Rule 6, Section 4, Article 2, Sections A and B, or subsections A and B, however you want to say it. It is a stalemate when, this is A, the contestants are interlocked in a position other than a pinning situation in which neither wrestler can improve their position. Or, B, either competitor has hands locked around one leg of an opponent to prevent scoring. The referee shall, as soon as possible, stop the match and wrestling shall be resumed as in for an out-of-bounds situation. If B is used repeatedly, it becomes stalling. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Just a little commentary here about the ultimate tiebreaker. This is one of those, you know it when you see it. If it's been a good match, 
the wrestlers go to the ultimate tiebreaker, which we know is the last 30 second ride out. If there's not been any stalling, you've not called stalemate, anything of that nature, give them at least one stalemate. At least one. And if it's been a stall fest, you've had to call stalemate 10 times, whatever the case is, then that's going to be a decision on you. But if the wrestler on top drops down to that ankle and holds on to it and doesn't do anything, give them a split second or two at the most, call that stalemate, and then talk to them. Hey, top man. Top woman, I just hit you with a stalemate. It was a stalemate, but that is aimed at you. you got to wrestle. They do it again, hit them with a stall. Remember, if it's red or green, hit them with a stall. And if that, it turns out to be a penalty, then that's on them. Referees should never purposefully decide the outcome of a contest. Sometimes we have to be the official. And there's nothing wrong with talking to wrestlers. doesn't matter if it's at the handshake before the match or after, during whatever. You can tell them, hey, boom, you right there. I said you were stalling. You got to do something. Or whatever the case is. You can talk to wrestlers. You can't coach them. You can't anything of that nature. But you can tell them what you called. You, hey, next one, next one, stalling. That's a point. You've already been hit with one in the first period. Let them know, hey, you got to wrestle. You got This is on you. This is. I don't want to decide the outcome, but if you're going to put me in a spot where I have to, then so be it. But I want you and this other person to find out who is the better wrestler here. There's one more spot in the rule book that talks about stalemates, and it's Rule 7, Section 6, Article 6, Subsection C. Repeatedly creates a stalemate situation to prevent an opponent from scoring. Now, that is something that is just going to have to come with practice, with time, with watching wrestling, with being around the sport, knowing when a wrestler is purposefully creating stalemate situations so another wrestler cannot score, whether it's in reversal, a takedown, near, whatever the case is, that is something that is going to have to come with time. And that, like I said, that's watching videos on YouTube, watching my training series that I have, going and watching practice at your local school, wherever we'll have you, doing freshman JV matches, whatever the case is, before you get through into the fire. That's something you're just going to have to pick up on your own or maybe even have a senior official or officials or coach or somebody has been on a sport for a while be able to help you out with that. Now, there is a difference between letting situations marinate, whether it's a stalemate or having wrestlers work for a takedown, a reversal, whatever the case is. There is some situations though that need to be stopped immediately and i'm going to go over a list here anytime we have an, a visible injury or a wrestler says i'm hurt i'm injured whatever the case is with everybody recording matches nowadays you got a lot of eyes around you you don't want to be the referee that is on the local news story for a wrestler being hurt you not stopping it for whatever reason, and then you're having to answer a lot of questions from people you shouldn't have to answer questions from or be all up in your business. Now, if a kid says they're hurt and it's not a pinning situation, whatever, stop the match. This for your sake, for everybody involved's sake, stop the match. Start injury time. Let them know, hey, that's your first injury, that's your second injury timeout. If it's a third injury timeout, that's the match. Hey, wrestler, that's your first injury timeout. You got one more, the third one stops the match. Well, let them know. Same thing with blood. Anytime you see blood, we know the symbol for blood time. Now, I just want to do a little housekeeping. Some officials say it is pointing to whatever color, if it's red or green, it's pointing to the nose. Some officials say it's doing a circle, kind of like the injury or the recovery time signal. I do both. I'm, I mean, I don't care. Who knows it? I sometimes I'll point, sometimes I'll say start blood time green, start blood time red, start blood time whatever. Anytime you see blood, stop the match and deal with it from there. When you've got five minutes of blood time, stop it. Don't put yourself in that situation. Technical violations, those are a little bit different. We know we have one, we have locking hands where you kind of let that melt, kind of let that marinate for a minute. The top wrestler's locked hands, give the bottom man a chance or bottom wrestler a chance to escape or reverse or whatever the case is. Give them a little bit of time to marinate. Again, that's something I'll know it when I see it. But 
your report to the maiden properly, you're going to call that right away, leaving the wrestling gear without permission. That's something, too, that some officials are really strict about. If a kid is holding his mouth or whatever, knowing they're about ready to throw up, and they dart to a garbage can, I would much rather a wrestler run off the mat and throw up in a garbage can as they try to ask for permission and they puke all over the mat and we're having to stop and do all that. Now, I know it says with permission. That's something that you just got to use your brain on. I don't care who knows. I don't care who hears this. Or who, I hope everybody sees it. But if a kid, a wrestler, is holding their mouth or run straight off the mat to a garbage can or has to run to the restroom maybe have a stomach issue or whatever the case is fine deal with that later if it's a penalty fine call it but use your brain on it don't you don't have to be a punk to them especially if you know what they're going to do so just something to think about illegal holds anytime we have an illegal hold that you see you gotta stop it we know i got my little list here legal hold symbol but anytime you see an illegal hold Stop the match. Out of bounds, we know you got to have at least two supporting points, whether it's two from one wrestler, a supporting point of both wrestlers combined to make two. But when we're out of bounds, call it. We're out of bounds. We're out of bounds. Green, you're down. Red, you're down. We're neutral, whatever the case is. Call, stop out of bounds immediately. Whenever you see stalling, give them a chance to wrestle. But whenever you see stalling, you call it. Boom. Stalling. You. Stalling. Bow, boom, hit them. Don't be afraid to call it. If you think they're stalling, they're probably stalling. Pins, anytime that you have a pin, call it. Don't have to mess around or wait to be patient. As soon as you see the shoulders or the scapulas hit the mat and they meet criteria, inbounds or however, to, if supporting points are inbounds and they meet the rule book criteria, call that pin. You don't have to be patient with it. One thing I do want to go over is unsportsmanlike conduct and here's why i say that unsportsmanlike conduct is going to be a little different for ages and weights now lightweights or 106s or 113s are probably not going to be as rough as our heavies and our 220s and we know there's a gap there but that's something that just comes with experience as well knowing when to call something unsportsmanlike conduct and knowing when it's good hard wrestling same thing with if we have younger kids, you're not going to let, or you shouldn't let younger kids get, get by with stuff that could really get somebody hurt. But you're probably not going to do that when you know you've got two stud high school wrestlers wrestling for a state championship. You're not going to call them for unsportsmanlike conduct. Whether I'm, I'm saying rough. I'm not talking about slapping or whatever the case is. But if you somebody comes through with a rough cross face, that's a heavyweight, yeah, I mean, that's hard wrestling. You gotta, it's one of those things you're gonna have to know it when you see it type deal. But just something to think about unsportsmanlike conduct when it comes to moves, running moves, hitting moves forcefully, when you should call unsportsmanlike and when you should just say, hey, that's good hard wrestling. Hope you enjoyed your five course meal here at the Takedown Cafe. Just wanna give you a little bit of dessert and say that my advice. And I messaged some other officials. They got back with me, and one of the one of the officials I have a lot of respect for sent me a phrase. He said, "Be patient but prompt." So remember that: patient but prompt when calling stalemates, or knowing when to stop a match in general. Patient but prompt. Like I said, we know other sports. As soon as a infraction or something needs to be called, a lot of sports they they're right on top of it with wrestling. We need to be patient but prompt. Takedowns, escapes. All that kind of stuff, knowing when to call it, stalemates, especially like the, the main part of this video is on stalemates. And I know usually I have wrestlers displaying moves, but if we done stalemates, it would I thought about doing it, but the more I thought, the more I wrote down, it would turn into a very, 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 very long video. And I still wouldn't be able to cover half the stuff I wanted to cover. So I just wanted to give a little excerpt of me talking. So there you go. Remember that. Patient but prompt, and I'll know it when I see it. So come back to the Takedown Cafe. We're always open. Tell somebody about the Takedown Cafe. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Let somebody know about it. Wrestling season is on its way. I know Kentucky, we finally have some dates, something to look forward to. We know other states have been wrestling. Some other national tournaments have been going on. I can't wait to get back out there. It's weird being home on a Saturday and Sunday in the winter months. I'm usually, you know, 
going 100 miles an hour in wrestling season. Can't wait to get back out and see everybody get back on the mats. So until then, hope you guys enjoyed this, and we'll see you on the mats.